Come ride the little train that is rolling down the tracks to the junction. Joe. You see, they're having a rehearsal of the ceremony for the grand installation. He is going to be made Keeper of the Sand. That must be pretty important in his lodge. Oh, it's the first step up the ladder to the august role of Grand Imperial Hump, leader of all the camels. Good evening. Hi, boys. We've come to escort our worthy lodge brother to the meeting. Yeah, that's our duty as humble sand crabs, second class. Uh, Bobby, tell Uncle Joe that Floyd and Charlie are here, huh? Boys, Uncle Joe's awful nervous about this rehearsal tonight. So do everything you can to bolster him up, huh? Sure. As loyal brothers, we'll give him the courage he needs. Right. <laughs> Joe, your faithful sand crabs are here to give you support. You have nothing to worry about. Thanks, fellas. Yeah, what if you do forget the ritual, Joe? That ain't so serious. Last one that happened to was Gilroy Hibbs. I remember when I had to memorize the secret ritual. I rehearsed and rehearsed till I could give that ritual backwards. And the night of the meeting, that's what happened. I gave the ritual backwards. Lloyd. <laughs> well, I'm just trying to put our good brother at ease. <laughs> Floyd, you put him any more at ease and he's going to collapse. Now, Uncle Joe, everything's going to be all right. You're going to be just fine. Here, I'll take your toothbrush. I tried to brush my teeth with my fountain pen. Why, <laughs> Kate? He is in a bad way. He hasn't done that since he went away to Topeka for six months. <laughs> yeah. Tell me I did okay at the rehearsal ceremony. You did okay, Joe. No, I didn't. I kept flubbing my lines all through the installation. But you did get through it. Well, all it saved me was sipping wine from the sacred camel bag. Yeah, you must have emptied the entire hump. I was scared, Sam. The wine gave me courage. But you shouldn't have sipped so much of it. It was part of the ceremony. It was just a rehearsal, Joe. Did you have to sip every time? The only part I was getting right. <laughs> See that? See what? Lights over them bushes. Oh, sure, Joe. No, I did see it. Let's find out what it is. Uh, Joe, what you need right now is a good night's rest. Sam, I know I saw it. I know I did. Joe, it could have been a flock of glowworms. Sam, glowworms don't put out that much light. Well, maybe they got them new type batteries. That... Oh, Joe, this whole thing is ridiculous. Well, I'm going to find out what it is, whether you are or not. <laughs> to the wine of courage. <laughs> Who are you? Where'd you come from? How do you do? I'm Dr. Uh, Newton, Isaac Newton. <laughs> Isaac Newton? Something wrong? No, no, it's just that Isaac Newton is a well-known name. Yeah, he was a pretty famous baseball player. <laughs> what are you doing out here? Uh, I'm a geophysicist. What's a geophysicist, Joe? You don't eat meat. <laughs> no, I'm a rock scientist. I, I seem to have lost my way. What about them lights over there? Those lights? Oh, those are the lights on my camper, which is stalled. You better turn them out. You'll run your battery down. Oh, no, no, no need to do that. No. If the battery goes dead, you'll be stuck out here. Come on. No, no, no. The lights went out. 
So they did. Uh, the battery must have gone dead. No need to switch the lights off now. No, I guess not. I could use a sip of that wine of courage right now. It makes two of us. Now, if you lead me to this hotel... What do you know about a hotel? A hotel? Uh, oh, uh, it's on this map that I use for locating different areas in which to search for rocks. First time I ever heard of a map having a shady rest on it. Yeah, we're so far out of touch, we don't even have a zip code. <laughs> And then all of a sudden, the weirdest thing happened. I was about to make a landing by instruments when the lights on my panel started flickering, and just like that, they went out completely. I don't know what kept me from crashing. Mm. Any idea what could have caused it? That's what beats me. The only other time my instruments blacked out was when I was caught in a lightning storm. Well, there was no lightning tonight, that's for sure. You know, occasionally, pilots have this same trouble when they're flying over highly radiated areas. Well, if there's any of that around, it's news to me. Kate, this is Dr. Newton. Uh, how do you do, Doctor? How do you do? This is Steve Elliott. How do you do? How do you do? Uh, Dr. Newton is a rock scientist. He, uh, he got lost in these parts. Uh, I wonder if you could put me up for the night. Oh, of course. You know, <laughs> this has been an evening of strange happenings. Uh, Steve was just telling me that uh, when he tried to land his plane tonight, suddenly his instrument panel went completely dead. Hey, that is kind of spooky. Doctor, you got any idea what might cause something like that? Well, uh, it could be caused by the radioactive rocks that I found and put in my camper. Oh, I doubt that a few radioactive rocks could have such an effect on a plane. It could, my boy, especially a little puddle jumper like yours. <laughs> How'd you know I had a little puddle jumper? Well, I just assumed it was a plane I saw earlier today when I was scouting for rocks. So where was this? Well, I, I believe it was over by uh, Silver Creek. Yes, that's it. It was Silver Creek. So, Silver Creek. Well, I must be getting to sleep. I've had a full day. I'll get your key, Doctor. I'll take room five with the southern exposure. Pardon me. How, how did you know room five was empty and had a southern exposure? Uh, well, I, uh, I happened to see the key in the number five cubby hole, and I thought I'd hazard a guess on the uh, southern exposure. I see. Uh, Uncle Joe, would you show the doctor to his room? in things, or is the sauerkraut, wieners, and strawberry shortcake we had for dinner catching up with me? No, you're not imagining things, Mrs. Bradley. I never flew near Silver Creek today. I was clear over in Pierce County. And any camper that could make it from Pierce County to the Shady Rest in that time it must be jet propelled. Jet propelled? You mean like a space vehicle? Oh, this is too much for one man in one day. Flying saucers and going through a lodge ceremony with Joe. <laughs> Say, where'd you see that camper? Well, we really didn't see it too clear, but it was close to where you keep your plane. Well, let's go down and take a look at it. Wait a minute. What if you come across some little green men? We'll take them to their leader, the jolly green dwarf. <laughs> Your camper's missing. Well, frankly, I see no reason to be. The authorities will come across in due time. 
What do you suppose happened to it? Well, maybe some boys came along and took a joyriding. In the middle of the night? That's happened before. Boy, you got better answers than dear Abby. <laughs> You're just in time to dry the dishes. I was cleaning Dr. Newton's room and I came across a loose leaf notebook with a log showing when he arrived in Hooterville and listing all the people he'd met. Well, honey, I'm, I'm certain that a scientist must keep a record of his activities. But this was typewritten. Well, a learned scientist could certainly master the complexities of a typewriter. But there's no typewriter in that room. Maybe he typed it before he got here. This listed all the people he'd met here at the hotel last night. Oh. Just been out doing a little rock hunting myself. I figured with you here, I might as well take advantage of your knowledge. Why not? Well, see, I found one rock that's got to be worth a fortune. I think it's a ruby. Well, here it is. Look how red and shiny that is. Hmm. Very interesting. You ever find anything like that before? Uh, not too often, though. That's what I figured. What is it? It's a taillight off a bicycle. <laughs> I was just checking on you. You sure know your tail like for rocks. <laughs> Did they get the fire out in Pixley? Was there a fire in Pixley? I didn't hear about it. In the lumber mill. Where'd you hear it? Uh, the telephone rang, and there was nobody around to answer it, so I answered it, and the party on the other end told me. Well, that's a nifty trick if you can do it. What? That telephone ain't connected. It's a dummy. <laughs> oh, well, I guess I just overheard somebody around here discussing it. Yeah. Kate, this bird's got me worried. Did you hear anything about a fire at the Pixley Lumber Mill? No, when did it happen? It didn't. But he's been getting messages over our phone, which isn't even connected up. You mean he's been talking on the this phone? This ring of thing has been hearing bells that aren't ringing. Well, now, Uncle Joe, I know a couple of strange things have happened, but he does seem like a completely rational man. Yeah, but with a name like Isaac Newton. Well, Newton's probably the family name, and they they called him Isaac, so he'd be named after a famous person. I'm certain he isn't the original Dr. Isaac Newton. Well, I'm not so sure. I passed him a bowl of fruit, and he dropped the apple. <laughs> well, it's about time you got back. You had me worried. Well, I'm sorry, Mom, but it really wasn't my fault. Charlie and Floyd stayed over in Pixley until they put out the fire at the lumber mill. Hello. It's you. I didn't hear you come in. I know. I mean, I have a habit of moving quietly. Any of that left? Oh, yes. Yes, of course. Thank you. Mm, good. I can learn to like this. You mean you never had that before where you came from? When? Why do you say where I came from? Well, this is the funniest thing, and you're going to think it's a scream, but a lot of the folks around here think you're from outer space. <laughs> imagine that. Yes, imagine. Well? Well, what? Are you? <laughs> Where are we all from? Oh, that, that's a wonderful answer. Are you? <laughs> Mrs. Bradley, if I said yes, you'd have me put away. Well, then for heaven's sake, say no. Would you believe me? I don't know. Thanks for the coffee. I believe I'll take a stroll. Hey, 
Hey, Kate, I've seen that nutty doc coming here. Did you learn anything from... What's the matter? Did you hear that door open and close? No, but I was in the lobby. Naturally, I didn't hear it. Well, I was in here and I didn't hear it. You mean you left through that door? The hard way, without opening it. <laughs> hey, you don't think... Uh... No, no, it's, it's just as he says. He... He moves quietly. <laughs> Sure, he left through that door. I still thought so. Well, that's where you're hiding. Hey, how do you like that? This chicken dog is scared. <laughs> Join the group. tells us that the doc's making you and the girls nervous. And we thought maybe it'd be a good idea if you held the lodge initiation down here at the Shady Rest tonight. Yeah, but your initiation is secret. You, you couldn't hold it here. Oh, you and the girls could probably stay out of sight. The only thing I think you probably hear would be the band playing the sacred camel song. And the only thing we'd ask of you is that you don't go around humming it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks. Uh, thanks for the offer anyway, boy. <laughs> Dr. Newton, that elevator doesn't work. It's a dummy. Oh, boys! I changed my mind. I have the initiation here tonight. You bet, Kate. We sure will. <laughs> Welcome to the burning desert, the omnipotent keeper of the sand. <laughs> Brother Carson, rise and step forward. Forward! <laughs> Sip the wine of courage from the sacred camel bag. <laughs> Repeat after me. Repeat after me. No, 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 wait, I say something. Well, hurry up and say something. Oh, well, you let me get a word in. I, jo read your right hand. I, Joseph Carson. I, Joseph Carson. Do hereby swear. Do hereby swear. To uphold the noble tradition of the ancient order of camels. Hold up the noble tradition of the ancient order of camels. And as keeper of the sand, and as keeper of the sand, I will be true and loyal and faithful. I will be true and loyal and faithful. And who's that on the stairway? No, 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 that's not him. I don't care if it's in there or not. There's somebody on the stairway. <laughs> Listen. Keeper of the light. Boy, that's you. Oh, what I do? Turn them on, dear brother. That ain't in the ceremony, dear brother. Well, turn them on anyway, you knucklehead. Okay, but I sure don't remember any of this in the ceremony. <laughs> What 
are you up to? Getting some of the secrets of the camels to give to your friends in outer space? No, no, I was just coming down to pay my bill. Ha! A likely story. Did I hear someone say they want to pay their bill? Hey, how long have you been there? Everybody's getting in on our secrets. We might as well broadcast them on TV. Oh, go on with your business. We won't pay any attention, will we, Doctor? Oh, we can't afford to take any chances, Kate. We're coming to the very secretest part. Come on, we won't notice. Keep her in the light. Come here. Are the fireworks ready? Well... Just, just, just nod your head, yes or no. <laughs> that comes to uh, $12 even. Thanks, and do drop in again. I mean, come again. <laughs> Mind. I'd like to be made keeper of the sand while I'm still young enough to cherish the honor. <laughs> oh, of course. Now, now, where were we? Oh, I just got through promising to be true and loyal and faithful. Oh, that's right. <laughs> with the fireworks. <laughs> oh, I'll get them. Brother, raise your hand. <laughs> Brother Carson, we are at the moment of truth. You will now utter the oath of office. Brothers, I hereby pledge as I go through life Take my lumps like a good camel. <laughs> and remember that I've put a grain in the sands of time. Oh, that's so beautiful. <laughs> Joe, you're going to dilute the sacred wine. <laughs> Keeper of the light, set off the rocket of honor. Rap on the window so you'll know it's time. What is that? That knucklehead. <laughs> Floyd, you set off the rocket for the Grand Imperial Hub. I did not. I just set off the itty bitty 29 cent one. <laughs> what do you men think you're doing? Well, it was some kind of mix up, Kate. It sure was. You probably scared the wits out of Dr. Newton. Dr. Newton, are you all right? Oh, dear, and a cash customer, too. <laughs> Dr. Newton, Dr. Newton. I better go help her out. She ain't got that Carson knack for soft soap. <laughs> Let me. What's the matter? He's not there. He's gone. Gone? There's not even a sign of him. The deadbeat snuck out the back way to beat the rent. Oh, no. He paid his bill. Don't you remember? Uh, well, I've got the money right here. Kate, let me see them bills. Why, they haven't made them this size in over 30 years. How do you explain that? Maybe, maybe he's a miser. Or maybe they gave him the wrong kind of money. They? Yeah. 30 years is just a drop in the bucket to them. Uncle Joe, would you stop that? I don't want to think about it. Hey. What do you make out of this? Subject? Porterville colonization project. Report negative. Area too primitive for our culture. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought I'd feel happy about somebody thinking we were backwards. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, what makes them think we're backwards? Yeah, what makes them think we're backwards? <laughs> I don't know. 
Oh, she must have just got the joke I told her three days ago. 